Praise God. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Friends and family, saints and friends, it is that time again. You have reached us at the right place at the right time. This is Yahweh's House of God online church service, and we would like to welcome you, amen, into this virtual sanctuary. At this time, we're going to have the sounding of our chauffeur. Amen. Amen. We thank God for the sounding of our chauffeur, which is preparing to allow us to enter into worship and praise. And who else to do that than none other than our deacon Lyle Henderson, our prince of praise and worship. Let's hear what he have to render unto the Lord at this time. God bless you, Deacon Lyle. God is just prayer away call his name with your heart and he'll hear every word you say when you cry at night he'll wipe your tears away just pray my love have to wonder about his love just put your faith and trust in his hands oh and he will always be there to shelter you from the storm and he will always From all harm, God is just a prayer away. Call, call his name with your heart, and he'll be, he'll every word you say, he'll be there for you to wipe your tears away just pray my love he'll be there right away and as the bible let us know men should always pray and not faint and that the effectual fervent prayer of the righteous availeth much Turn with us and go with us as we go to the throne of grace to beseech our Heavenly Father in this time of need in a word of prayer. Gracious Father, in the name of Jesus, we come before you once again. We are thanking you, Father God, for this day, this new day that you have given to us, your people, a day of refreshing, a day of renewal, a day of thanksgiving. We're giving you praise. We're giving you honor. We're giving you all of the glory that's due unto you. We ask you, Father God, that you might look down from heaven to continue to protect your people during the time that we're in. Help us, Father God, that we will do things, oh, Father God, that are prudent. Help us, Father God, that we'll do things that are safe. Help us, Father God, that we will do things that's mindful of our brothers and sisters. Oh, Father God, we're asking you, Lord, to remember those who have, may have been diagnosed with COVID-19, those that are suffering with the coronavirus, those that are in the hospitals, the nursing homes, Father God, even those that are going into surgery. We're asking you, Father God, that you might go before them, Father God, touch the hands of the doctors and the nurses. Remember those families who have lost loved ones at this time. We're asking you, Father God, that you might continue to to bless and to keep them oh father god during this difficult time we won't forget to give your name to praise we won't forget to lift you up these things we ask in the name of jesus yeshua the messiah we pray in jesus name amen at this time join us in a scripture reading today's reading you will find us in matthew the 22nd chapter 
verses 37 through 40. And it reads on this wise, Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is likened unto it, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. The Lord add a blessing to the reading of his word. For those of you that have been joining us on a frequent basis, as you know, we have a spirit and a time of giving. We would like for you, those that are able, to share with us in this time of giving. Please watch the monitor to see how you can assist in supporting our ministries. Grateful to God for each and every one of you joining us on today. Welcome to my home and you have welcomed me into your home. This is a wonderful Sabbath afternoon and we give God praise, we give him glory, and we lift him up. At this time, we're going to turn to the Lord in a word of prayer. Amen. That our Heavenly Father might hear the cries of his people on today. Just bow with us for just a moment. Gracious Father, in the name of Jesus, we come before you once again. We thank you, Father God, for your goodness, your mercy, and your grace. We thank you, Father God, for the gathering of your people on this, your holy Sabbath afternoon. We ask you, Father God, that you will use us as a vessel on today. Father God, oh, Father God, give us what is needed at this time for your people, oh, Father God, that they might be able to grow thereby. Oh, Father God, allow us to take it into our spirit and to apply the words that we receive on today. We bless you. We give your name to praise. We lift you up. We know that you are marvelous, and I bless your wonderful name. These things we ask in the name of Yeshua the Messiah, Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Friends and family, I thank you once again for joining us for our virtual services. Once again, we're doing this, and we have been doing this ever since between, I guess, February and March, and we've been happy and delighted to do it. And we will continue in this particular fashion. I'm going to simply say right now, indefinitely, but we will let you know at the appropriate time when we're going to begin to consider going back into the sanctuary. But until then, I thank God for how he has been meeting us in our homes. Amen. If you know that God has been meeting you in your home, you can just wave your hand right there if you're on camera or if you want to put a chat and say, he's been meeting me. He's been meeting me because I know that he's been meeting me here in my home. And I give him praise. Amen. I lift him up. I bless his wonderful name. And I thank him for giving us this opportunity to share with you a word, amen, that God has given to his people on today. I, I'm, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say this. We're, we're at that part of the year, saints, friends, family. It, <laughs> we're there. I'm going to use a football term that I've heard him say many times, and that word is encroachment. And right now we are encroaching upon the new year. Uh huh. So you know what they do during the New Year's, right? That's when you hear the New Year's resolutions. Well, my mind, I was thinking back on the early part of this year. Amen. 
And it was during the, the New Year time, amen, and I was listening to some of the prophets, because some of them said that they were prophets, amen. I, I listened to the prognosticators, amen. I listened to the seers of our time. And, and some of them, for those that remember, they made a mention that 2020 is going to be the year of clarity. 2020 is going to be the year of clarity. And, and when I began to ponder, you know, just that definition of 2020 vision, and, and I looked it up in my little dictionary here, and, and one of the things that the dictionary rendered is, it, it simply says that 2020 vision is defined as perfect sight especially as measured by a standard test. And, and as I began to, to think about, you know, and reflect on what happened this year using that 2020 vision, I said it was clear to me. <laughs> it was clear to me. And I'm sorry, I'm going to go there. It was clear to me that the death of hundreds, even thousands, could have possibly been prevented if we didn't heed or if some didn't heed to the lies of others. I know you, you can't say amen. You could put it into the chat. That's, that's fine. This may not be something that's popular, but for those that are able to stick with us until the end, you'll, you'll see where this is going. Thank God for Jesus. Amen. We could have survived. Some could have survived. If they didn't listen to the lies of others. I, I like this when the Bible, it puts it this way. In the book of instructions, Proverbs, it says this. A ruler who listens to lies <laughs> will have corrupt officials. A ruler that listens to lies. They're going to simply have corrupt officials. What's interesting is, is it doesn't put a name or a face on who the ruler is. It just lets you know that if the ruler's lying, the people that's around him is going to be what? Well, uh, let me... Be good here. Amen. We, we've shared with you a few occasions ago, you know, I, I shared with you regarding lies, right? Some of you might remember. And if you don't, I'm going to reshare it with you again. A lies have legs and it will travel, but the truth will stand as the lie unravels. Let me say that again. A lie, yes, a lie does have legs and that lie is going to travel. But the truth will stand as all of them lies begin to unravel. I, I thank God for, for David again in Psalms 119th division. David simply says this. He says, he says, thy word is true from the beginning. See, saints of God, friends and family, I'm here just to share with you the matchless word of God. Uh, we're not here to, to try to trick anybody or to, to, to say things that are false or to say things that are not prudent. We're here to help out. We're here standing on the word of God. David says, thy word is true from the beginning and every one of thy righteous judgments endureth forever. So as the, the lies of those that carry them continues to unravel, the truth will always stand. Hmm. Going back to my 2020 vision, prophets, if I were to listen to some of them, if I were to listen to those that I thought had the way, where would I be? And I begin to continually to ponder, maybe, just maybe, maybe, just maybe, if some would have taken the heed, if some would have simply listened to what I would call basic instructions. Some had put their confidence into the wrong source. Some had faith in, as the scripture says, leaders who were lying. Mm. Can I go there for just a moment? Our confidence is placed in someone or something. Amen? If I were to look at confidence or if I were to look at faith, that's what it would render it up. Unfortunately for us, we have sometimes placed our confidence in those who are not even worthy of our confidence. Oh, bye. 
On the flip side, there are some of you that are listening today. And I'll look direct, I'm going to look directly straight. You know, in church, they would say, everybody look at me. Everybody look at me. This is why I love this medium. See, we, we get to be personal here. We get to say, amen. And see, no one else has to know that you're saying amen. Hallelujah. No one has to see that, hey, I agree. Preacher, I know where you're coming from. Some of us, we actually put our confidence in the right space. My Lord, we put it in the hands of our leader. But unfortunately for us, those that should have known better, even some of them has failed. Some of you, I have heard this in the, the ether. I'll, I'll, some will say I've heard it through the grapevine. There are some of you even that's here and sharing with us on today. Some of you have experienced church hurt. My leader was this. My leader was that. You have placed your confidence in the leadership of man. And, and I get it. I understand. I, I, I get it. Where am I going with this? The, the one that failed, he should have known better. He might have fumbled the ball, if you will. He, he may have slipped. And for those of us that are a part of Christendom, if you will, there, there is a text that we normally share with the saints. When I've seen the prosperity of the wicked, my foot almost slipped. And some of the pastors, it, it actually slipped. And a poor sheep, you're asking, where, where are we supposed to go? What, what are we supposed to do? Let me stop right there. I, I, I'm going to be good. Hey, Amen. I, I understand. I, I get it. Church hurt. Let's go ahead and call it what it is. Some may refer to it as church. I'm going to refer to it as real. But the one person that I know have never let me down, amen, is the one, amen, that we're asking you to reconsider, amen. Church may have let you down, but God has never failed you, amen. People might have, you know, let you go to the side, but God has never failed you, amen. Uh, and let me say this. My, my pastor used to say this. He, he's a wonderful teacher preacher, expounder of the gospel. I, I appreciate Apostle Larry C. Hamner for all that he has done and the contributions that he has made to our little assembly. He, he had a little flock and we're doing the best that we can with what God has placed into our hands. Amen. And one of the things that he taught us, he said, the, the, the worst prophet is a false prophet prophet. Amen. I'm going back to that 2020 vision. I'm going back to that leadership and lies. The worst prophet is the false prophet. And, and I have this, this strange, you know, thing that's going on in my head that there's so much bad information. There's so much foul information. What is it that the church is supposed to do? And, and guess what the Bible says about those prophets that are spreading lies. The, the prophet says this. He says, woe unto the pastors that destroy and scatter the sheep of my pastor, saith the Lord. Or woe unto the leaders. This is, this is why it's not just a simple thing to, to say, I, I want to lead a group of people. I, I want to lead the people of God. I want to be able to receive the time. <laughs> Something tell me this is not going to be a hooting message. <laughs> Got to do a little teaching this morning. I'm watching some really, really smart people get led away. Because their source is not the true source. They're putting their confidence in something that's not based on sound doctrine. Anything that's going to be outside of God is not going to be sound doctrine. Doctrine. Let, let, let me finish this up. Today, I'm just simply here to share with you one little theme or one little message. And if you get this, for the most part, I'm done. I, I've done my job here on today. If you were to say, Pastor, what is your theme? My theme is have faith in God. Amen. As I've been sharing over the past couple of weeks, here are 12 keys or 12 personal keys to success in God. And if you want to have success in God, you need to have faith. And when I say the word faith, I want you to hear the word confidence. 
I want you to know that he is someone that's worthy of your trust. He won't leave you. He won't fail you. He won't forsake you. You have to realize during the time that we're in, saints of God, I want you to know we're in an evil time. And, and if we can just put our focus on God, amen, you may not fall victim to the evils of the day. Amen. There's a little story that I want to share with you. And, and the, the story is really anecdotal. Oh, my God. It's anecdotal. And, and it touched me in such a way that, that, that I, I, it, it, it blew my mind. It, it, if I can say it that way, it blew my mind. And you might be asking, Pastor, what are you talking about? There was a parable, and, I, and as a matter of fact, this wasn't the parable. I'm just going to go to the reality. There were two men that were looking to be healed. The two men, they, they had a situation that was unique to them, and it really talks about what some of the seers, amen. Wow, it, it talked about what we mentioned with those seers. Two men. You'll find me in Matthew, the ninth chapter. You're going to go directly to my core text, Matthew, the ninth chapter. I'm going to begin at verse 27. If you have your Bibles, please turn there with me. If not, lend me a listening ear for just a moment as we share this word of God with you. We'll be reading from the common English version of the Bible. And it simply says this. I'm talking about two men as they approached Jesus. They, they approached him because they had a problem. And, and this is what the text says. As Jesus was walking alone, two blind men began following him and shouting. Did you see that? Let's try that again. Two blind men began following him. What was very interesting to me was the fact that the two men were blind. They're blind. They can't see. But they knew enough that when Jesus came around, I don't know if they knew him by smell, because the scripture says that they were blind. I don't know if they heard his voice. I don't know if they knew about how his sandals or, or, or his feet may have touched the ground or touched the dirt or wherever he was to make his sound unique more than everyone else. But these two blind men began to follow him and shouting, let me get through. I want to take my time today. Son of David, have pity on us. Verse 28, after Jesus had gone indoors, the two blind men came up to him. Again, they're continuing their pursuit of him. They ask him, do you believe I can make you well? This is what Jesus asked them. He says, do you believe I can make you well? He's asking the two blind men. I don't know what their posture is right now. I don't know if they're hunched over. What I do know is, is that they're blind and that they're hearing from God. Do you believe I can make you well? And the men simply said what? Yes, Lord. They answered, yes, Lord. Jump down to verse 29. Jesus touched their eyes and said, because of your faith, you will be healed. Somebody say that with me. Because of your faith. My God in heaven, because of your faith. Amen. I'm going to need a witness. You can tap the witness right there in the channel. Because of your faith. Saints of God, it's because of your faith, you can be healed. You can be the success that you desire. You can overcome that obstacle. You can overcome that challenge, that circumstance, that situation. The one that's too big for you. The one that your friends talked about. You can because of your faith. My God in heaven, because of your faith. Amen. And, and, and here's what's interesting. When I began to look at John and, and I began to think about what happened to the Jews at this time, and then John, the 10th chapter, I'll be reading in verse 23. But when I began to, to just kind of, you know, think about what, what could have been going through Jesus' mind as he had this exchange. Amen. I'm going to come back to the blind men in just a moment, but I, I'm, my, my mind was curious. Because here I have the, the Jews that are approaching him and they said at the time of the Feast of Dedication took place in Jerusalem. 
It was winter, similar to where we are right now. We're in the feast of Hanukkah, or some are referred to it as Hanukkah. Some may refer to it as the Festival of Lights. The scriptures refer to it as the Feast of Dedication. I believe today is either the second or the third day. But either way, it was winter, and Jesus was walking in the temple in the colonnade of Solomon. Let's continue on. So the Jews gathered around him and said, how long will you keep us in suspense? Many of us, we have these encounters with our friends and our families and they'll circle around us and begin to question why are we continuing to keep our faith in God? Why are we continuing to go down the paths that we're selected to go? But I want to focus on Jesus. They, they looked at him and said, why don't you just tell us plainly? Why keep us in suspense? If you are Christ, tell us plainly. Just come out and say it. And this is what I love about Jesus. Jesus simply says this. He says, I told you, and you did not believe me. The works that I do in my Father's name bear witness about me. But you do not believe because you are not among my Sheep, you're not believing because you don't believe my voice in the first place. He's letting the Jewish men know at that time you didn't believe. You're not going to believe. I've told you, I've revealed to you who I was, and you simply don't believe. Saints of God, there, there are some things that God is doing that he's revealing himself unto you, and there are many that are like these Jewish men that are simply saying, I'm not going to believe. And then what's interesting is you're going to have a co-signer. The Bible talks about those who co-sign. It says we're, we're not supposed to be found co-signing for anyone. But what, what we'll do is we'll, we'll hear that Jesus will do a work. We won't believe him, but there will be a co-signer. Amen. The co-signer is not coming with finances, but they're coming with false doctrine. They'll co-sign on the false doctrine that you're believing. And we know how it is. It, it, all it takes is one or two people to co-sign on some bad information. And guess what? We're going to travel. Remember I said a, a lie will travel some, but the truth will stand. It's the lie begins to unravel. The truth is Jesus is talking to us each and every week. He's sharing with his people, do things that are safe. Have faith in God. And because of your faith, my God, Somebody stopped by for healing today. I'm telling you because of your faith. Some have stopped by, amen, to receive a word of comfort. And I'm telling you on today, because of your faith, because of your belief in God, hallelujah, God is simply saying, well, I will, hallelujah. But, but the men here, they, they, they weren't having it. They weren't believing it. Can I finish this up just a, just a little bit? Let me finish this up. My sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me. I give them eternal life and they will never perish and no one will snatch them out of my hand. My sheep know my voice. Stranger, they're not going to follow. No one's going to be able to take them out of my hands. Then Jesus continues this, this particular route. He says, my father who has given them to me is greater than all, and no one is able to snatch them out of the father's hand. I and the fathers are one. I and the father are one. Jesus is saying, if, if you're talking about the father, you're talking about me and, and many of you that know the rest of the story. And man, you know that the, the, the men, because they couldn't believe for the very work's sake, they couldn't believe because they couldn't hear Jesus' voice. Their faith in God was not where it needed to be. Some might refer to them as haters, but they had a specific job that they had to do as well. I can imagine as a, as a young Jewish person at that particular time, you were taught and you were trained. Shema Israel, hear Israel. The Lord our God is one. And then when the prophets began to speak of Jesus in his coming, there were specific things that they were supposed to be looking for. Unfortunately for them, they allowed the, the lies and the pressures of those that were around them not to believe the truth that was standing right there in front of their face. Hallelujah. 
No one's going to snatch you out of God's hands. Amen. No one can, can, can take that which God has given unto you. Amen. There, there is something that I need to interject right here. I need to interject this because it, it, it's something about when a lie is only hurting other folks, but it's something else when the lie begins to get so close to home that now folks are kind of waking up. And, and I realize that we, we still haven't done the full wake up just yet, but I just want to interject something here. I was listening to the news on yesterday and I was listening to the, the director of the CDC. I believe his name is Dr. Robert Redfield. And, and he says something, you know, that really sparked my interest. He says, over the next 60 to 90 days, in other words, he was just letting people know from an educated perspective, from a medical perspective, from a perspective that has dealt and understood. See, many of us haven't taken time to look into a microscope for any amount of time. Many of us, don't, we, we don't know what it means to, to go into the, to the lab or to go into a clinic or a clean room to take a look at something and, and to spend hours upon hours upon hours slaving over data, slaving over the images that you're seeing. We may not be able to connect with that. That's something that we can't see. We, we can't phantom. Amen. But this director, man who has spent some time in the lab, he spent time studying, he says the next 60 to 90 days, there'll be more deaths per day than what they were during 9-11, during Pearl Harbor. Just yesterday, they, they, they shared these numbers in John Hopkins University Medical Center, 2,768 deaths recorded in one day. And they're showing us a, a, a bleak outlook for things that are about to occur. They're saying this is going to be more deadly than that San Francisco earthquake. Could be more deaths happening per day than what happened in Pearl Harbor, than what happened in 9-11. You say, well, pastor, where are you going with this? Let me tell you where I'm going with this. Liars, lies. They have no place. Amen. There are still some who says they're not going to believe. But saints of God, I'm encouraging you on today. Amen. I am imploring you on today to activate that which God has given unto you. Amen. He has given everybody just enough confidence. Amen. He's given us a brain. He's given us the capacity. He's given us the ability. The last I checked, I believe that every person that's human has what they call an amygdala. Every human that's here have what they call in the brain a hippocampus. Everyone has neurons floating around on the inside of their head. They have synapses that make up their intellectual being. So God has given to mankind. My God, he's given us the ability to jumpstart the process. Amen. And as I shared with you, because of your faith, because of your faith, Jesus is saying, well, I can make you whole. I can heal that hurt that you have right now. Amen. Some of us, we're sitting here knowing that we have lost loved ones and we're hurting right now. We're in need of comfort. And God is saying, because of your faith, I will come in and provide, amen, the comfort that you need. There might even be some that's on the line right now, and I pray that there isn't. Amen. But if there is, I want you to text me on tonight. If you need some food, text me on tonight. Amen. We'll send some groceries over. We'll, we'll get an Uber going, an Instacart, something. Amen. He said, when I was hungry, did you feed me? We want to be found doing those things. Amen. That's going to help out the saints of God. Because of your faith. Amen. God has said, I'm going to heal you. If you were to say, well, brother, pastor, well, what is faith? Hebrews 11 chapter. 11 chapter verse 1. And it simply says this. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. And when I think of that word, a uh, 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 substance, when I begin to break things down, it just simply means foundation or insurance. Amen. When I begin to take a look at the word evidence, I can simply hear the word conviction. 
So now I can say what? My foundation or my conviction is my confidence in God. Have faith in God. And because I believe God, going back to the blind men, amen, you can learn a lot from a blind man. Amen. You can learn a lot from those that don't have all of their faculties. And Jesus, as he was walking along, the two blind men follow the blind man, even though they didn't have the 2020 vision. Amen. According to the doctors, they had enough sense to go to the man that can do something about their situation. They had enough sense to cry out and say, Father, thou son of David, have pity on us. Have pity on us, blind men. I would rather take what the blind man had. And what was it that the blind man had? There's a piece of me that want to go off into hoot land, but saints of God, CDC says the next 60 to 90 days are going to be the deadliest. The question is, what is our posture going to be? Because of my faith, I'm believing that each and every one of you that are on the call are going to make good choices. Because of my faith, I'm believing that God is going to provide the healing that you need, amen, in your family, in your life, for your relatives. Amen. There might even be some that are on the call today that have lost their job. I remember what it was like to be without a job during a recession. It's a horrible period. You wake up day in and day out. You got all of these people in your ears. Why didn't you apply here? Why didn't you apply here? Why didn't you do this? Why didn't you do that? Everybody has a suggestion. None of them had the ability. None of them had the, 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 the wherewithal to say, I'll, I'll start a business. Amen. And I'll give you a job. Amen. And I thank God, even though I had my own business, I told people I'm not unemployed. It's just that I don't have any clients right now. Well, the clients that I have, they're praying clients, not paying clients. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Some of you know who you are. I, I specifically ask certain people, just pray for the business. Just pray that the business will prosper. God said, what I'll put, whatever you put your hands to, I'll bless it. And because of my faith, amen, my faith in God, he blessed the business. Even though I was out of funds, I was not out of funds. Every month he made the way. Every month the, the mortgage was paid. Amen. Every month there was food on the table. Every month he, he sent me a word from the man of God to encourage Pastor Tim. And this is what Pastor Tim is now sharing back to the saints of God who might be going through. And, they, and some might say, oh, you don't know what I'm going through. Brother, sister, I do. I, I've been there. I remember one stint, it was nine months. The second stint was almost a, a year and, a, and some change. So I know what it's like to wake up every morning not knowing what's going to happen. I know what it's like when, when, when uh, unemployment runs out. Amen. I know what it's like when your number isn't a part of the unemployment numbers because you're no longer receiving a check. So every time you hear that unemployment number, they say, oh, the number is here, is there. It's those that are receiving or those that are speaking to that department. But for those of us that's out, we may not be a part of that statistic because of your faith in God. Amen. Let, let, let me wrap this up. Because of your faith. Amen. I'm saying because of your faith, God is prepared to heal. Because of your faith. Amen. That there were some that, that came looking, you know, looking for healing. There were some today that, that came looking for God to make a way. Because of your faith, I want you to know that the way has been made. There were some looking for a revival. Amen. It, it would be wonderful to have a good old-fashioned revival, but I can have a revival right here in my own home. Because of my faith, God will send revival. Amen. I may just have a personal revival, and I, I, I can dance like this all by myself, but guess what? He brought me what I needed because of my faith. He's, he's given me that ability to look at these next few days, these next few months. As he says in ideal, your darkness shall be as the noonday. Saints of God, I don't know about you, but this is, I believe, one of our nation's darkest 
hours, but God is going to see us through because of our faith in him. I hope you have some faith today to believe that God can and that he will supply all of your needs according to what? His riches, according to his glory. Can I say one more thing? One more thing. 